What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you the magic of Vim macros. And Vim is a topic that seems to work pretty well with you guys, you seem to enjoy it, and I really enjoy making videos about Vim, I think it's a very exciting topic. And because of that we're going to do more of this, and today we're going to talk about macros. And macros are a little bit more advanced than the basic Vim key binding, so it's, it's a little bit more, it requires a little bit more conscious thought than just yanking lines and deleting lines and then, you know, uh, change inner word or change stuff in parentheses and so on. It's a little bit more complex than that. It requires more conscious thought, but it's also more powerful. And at the same time, it's pretty basic because it belongs to core Vim. It belongs to vanilla Vim. You don't need NeoVim. You don't need any plugins. You can just use it. I'm still going to use NeoVim because I just like NeoVim, but you can do this in the vanilla Vim without plugins, without any additional settings. So let's get started. We're going to switch the scene here. I have prepared a couple of files here. So when I go LS, you can see I have basics one, basics two and basics three. And I'm going to show you how Vim macros can be useful based on these examples. And you're going to also see that when I open now basics one.txt, you're going to see that I already have my notes here. So this is one of those special videos where you can actually see what I have prepared. So I don't have it on my second screen, which means that I don't have to look on my second screen all the time. So we're going to start with a very basic example. And before we talk about the example itself, we're going to talk about macros. A macro is essentially just something that we can repeat. So I can start recording a macro by saying Q and then a letter. For example, QA starts recording the macro A. You can see down here on the left, we have recording A. And what I can do now is I can do all sorts of things. For example, let's say hello world. And then let's go ahead and copy that line. And I don't know, change word and do not a lowercase hello, for example. When I now press Q again, it stops recording the macro and I can go into a new line, for example, and now call at a to repeat the macro at a to repeat the macro. It's going to do exactly what I did. It's going to just repeat the same sequence. So you need to put uh, you, we need to put conscious thought into that because it's going to just repeat whatever we did. If we did something stupid, it's going to do it again and again and again. So we're going to work with this simple example first up here, which is just the line one is a number and what we want to have is one to have two is a number and we want to have three is a number and maybe we want to do this a thousand times. Now we can do it manually. We can also do it a little bit more intelligently by just copying the lines and then, you know, changing this and so on, or maybe using the increment. But you can see it's quite tedious work to do. We don't want to do this manually. We want to do it with a Vim macro. So what we can do is we can think, okay, what would be a pattern that I can repeat over and over again to achieve this result. And in this case, the pattern is quite simple. We copy the line by saying YYP. So we're yanking the line, pasting the line. And then what we do is we change this, we increment this with control A. That would be the macro because if I do this again now, YYP control A, YYP control A, this is a macro that we can automate. So what we do is we go back to the first line and we just say QA start recording a macro YYP control A and then Q to stop recording. And now if I say at A at A at A, you can see this works. And now I can say 50 at A. There you go. Or I can say 100 or actually, yeah, 100 at A. Now I don't even think that we need to start at the beginning of a line. I'm not sure if the macro is going to work here as well. Yeah, it works from anywhere. There you go. So this is the first macro, very, very simple example, just to get you started uh, with how this works. We're going to now look at a more complicated macro um, <clears throat> in the basics two file. So NV basics, by the way, if you're not using NeoVim, or actually, if you are using NeoVim, you're going to have to write NVim if you're using the ordinary vim, you're going to type vi or vim. Uh, so basics 2.txt. And um, yeah, so here we have another example, I have the macro down here. So I don't forget it if I need it. Uh, but the example is quite simple. We have person one, we have name Charles, for example, and money. And what we want to do here is we want to uh, increment the person number. So let's say just for a hypothetical example, we have the job to make all persons 
start with 101. So we want to change this year to 101. We want to change this year to 102 and so on. At the same time, we want to change this to have a first letter uppercase. So we want to change Charles. Uh, we want to change Charles to uh, capital C and capital B and capital A and so on. This is what we want to do. And we want to also set the money for everyone to zero. So like that. How can we do that with this macro here? All we need to do is we need to go to the beginning of the line. We need to press W once, uh, once to get to the next word. Then we type 100, control A to incre increment 100 times. Then we uh, press W, 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 W to go to Charles. We go into visual mode by pressing V. We uh, press capital U to cause the uppercase. We go escape. We go W, 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 W. Then change word zero and then down and go back to the beginning of the next line. This is if we repeat this over and over again, we're going to get the result that we want. So let's turn this into a macro. Let's go to the beginning of the line, record macro A, W, um, 100, control A, escape, or not necessarily escape, W, 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 or actually just four W, then visual mode, uppercase, escape, again, four times W, then change word, zero, escape, down, zero, stop recording. And now if I go A, you can see it works. And if I go eight, A, there you go, or eight at A. You can see that we processed the data, we changed the IDs to 100 plus, and we uh, changed the names to first letter uppercase, and we set all the uh, balances here to zero. So this is also something that you can do. I just made up an example here, but oftentimes in coding, for example, you might have in Java some functions or in Python some functions that have a certain signature. So for example, you have 10 functions in Java that return void instead of string. So you wanna change this to string, but also you wanna change the name and also you wanna change the parameters and so on. So you have multiple things because what you can do in general in Vim is you can just repeat one command. So for example, if I wanna change, um, if, if I just wanna do one thing, for example, I wanna, increment by 100, I can just go ahead and say 100 and control A, and then I can just do the same thing with dot. So I can just use dot to do the one thing. But if I have multiple things that I want to do, I have to use macros. And this can be very useful for processing data, for changing text, for uh, changing function signatures and so on. And this is what we can do with Vim macros. So let's go to the last example, which is a little bit more complicated. I have to remember it again. Uh, the idea is the following. Uh, first of all, what do we have here? Let's close this. The idea is the following. We have blog posts here, sample blog posts that I have written here. My post one, a new beginning, my post two, I'm back again, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, what we want to do is we want to extract certain things from that post. So for example, we want to remove that, we want to remove that, we want to remove that, we want to remove this line here. And what we want to have, we only want to have the text and then we want to extract this text into another file. So we have another file here, extractions, which we can split here. Uh, let's close nerd tree. Yeah, there you go. So we have extractions to the right and we have uh, the stuff on the left here. Now I'm going to open up another file here, the macros, because I have prepared them in a separate file. Um, and here I have the macros. The idea is that what we want to do is we want to first clean the text. This is going to be the macro A. We're going to remove this. We're going to remove this. We're going to, we're going to remove this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to select all that and paste it here to the right. And then we're going to combine A and B in a third macro. So the first macro is cleaning the blog post. We're going to go to the beginning of the blog post. And what we do here is we're going to remove until and including the dash. Uh, because yeah, that's what I forgot to mention. We want to have the heading because that's still content, but we don't want to have this. So we're going to say C or actually D F and then um, this hyphen. Then we want to press Dell one more time. So Enf is just a, der a German for Dell. So I uh, added this German here. Uh, think of this as Dell. So we get, uh, we go D F and then hyphen, then one Dell key to remove one more symbol. Then what we do is we go down one line and we delete the line by saying DD. There you go. And then what we do is we 
find the next opening parentheses across lines. Now we cannot use F or T for that because this only looks in the same line. We want to find the next occurrence of opening parentheses. This of course assumes that we don't have any parentheses in the blog post, which is naive, but in this case it's true. So we go slash opening uh, bracket. And what I do here is I go with enter. And what I do now is I, um, I delete two lines. So DD, DD, and then go down twice to the beginning of the next post. So in this case, once is enough, and then zero. So let's go back and do all this as a macro. So QA is going to be um, DF hyphen del go down once DD, find the next opening parentheses, there you go. And then uh, delete, delete. And actually, we only need to go down once I think. Isn't that true? I think so. So let's go down zero and stop recording. Now if I go at a, we're going to see that this works. We have this macro with which we can do that. So we now have the macro, but what we also want to do is we want to uh, take all of that and paste it in the in the second file here, in the extractions file. Uh, and if we want to do this one by one, of course, we can do that as well. So after the first macro, after I do at a, I'm at the beginning at of the last post. So what I have to do here is I have to go up twice, um, or actually three times in this case. Yeah, I need to go up three times. So the notes are not entirely correct here. I need to go three times up, enter visual line mode. And then what I need to do is I need to go um, to go to the top. So basically, I need to go to GG, which is the beginning of the file. And then what I do is I cut it. So I go with Dell, control W to change the file, I go to the right, and then I paste. That is the next macro. So let's go back and repeat this as a macro. Uh, I want to execute a first, and then I want to record the macro B Q B. So I go up three times. And I go into visual line mode. So shift V, and I go to the beginning of the file GG. And then I go D to cut it. Then I go control W right to change or to to go to the right file, then I go paste. And um, yeah, actually, I can stop here now. So I can go with Q to stop the recording. So this means that now what I have to do in order to combine them is, of course, I have to make a, uh, a third macro C in order to make this movement work. So let's go back and create a new macro C. How does this work? So I'm going to delete this, I'm going to close this. What we want to do is first of all, we want to have the macro A. So we want to call A. Now we want to call B. And now what I want to do in order to allow for the next A to happen is I want to go control W left and delete two lines. And then I can do the next thing. Uh, or actually, I'm not sure if that's true. Because if I now go A and B, no, it doesn't work. So we need to do it in a different way. Uh, let's go back here. So first want to execute A, then want to execute B. And now what I want to do is I want to go to capital G to go to the end of the file, I want to create a new line. And I want to close, and then I want to go back, delete two lines, and then a B, right? Okay, so that's it, we need to record macro C now macro C is going to consist of a and B. So I'm going to record C. And I'm going to say at a at B capital G, O, escape, control W left, DD, DD, and quit recording. So now if I call the macro C, it's doing this automatically. So let's go back. And just say four at C. There you go. Automates the whole process. I did it only four times. Let's do it five times. 
5 at C. Okay, the last one didn't work for some reason. Uh, why is that? Probably because we didn't have enough stuff to delete or something. Okay, I don't want to make this too perfectionistic here because I'm not going to, uh, th this tutorial is not about teaching you the perfect macro, but you can see the power. You can see the power and the magic of Vim macros. What you want to do is you want to think of problems that are repetitive and tedious, like formatting these or cleaning these blog posts, extracting the, the important stuff, cutting it and pasting it to another file. You can do this manually, right? I can do it with a mouse even. I can remove that. I can remove that. I can remove that. I can take that and paste it here, but it's way more easier. Uh, it's way easier to just go and say for at C. Damn, it does it for you. So it's very, very simple. Of course, you need to optimize it so that it also works for the last blog post. Um, but in general, it's a very, very nice thing to have in Vim that you can just define your own macros. And the, the thing that this didn't work now is not because macros are bad. It's just because my macro wasn't perfect, but I don't want to fix it now for the video here. Um, but, but that is how you can work with Vim macros. And this is a very powerful tool, especially if you put in uh, conscious thought to automate processes. And the more often you do this, the easier it's going to be for you and the better macros you will be able to write on the fly. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.